This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Back. Members of the public, particularly dog owners, are being encouraged to ensure your animals are properly secured and enclosed to prevent any incident from occurring, which may include dogs that are overly aggressive or that cannot be restrained. This coming on the heels of what is being described as a ferocious dog attack that leaves an adult male with injuries to his face, arms, and legs. You are looking at photos of the injuries the victim received during the horrific dog attack. The photos were widely shared on social media. According to police reports, the man was attacked by his friend's two-year-old pit bull while visiting the residence off Carmichael Road. As a result of the injuries suffered, he was transported to the hospital via emergency medical services personnel for further medical care. Police say the dog was removed from the residence by animal control personnel. Investigations are ongoing into this matter. Despite Attorney General Ryan Pinder advising permanent secretaries in the various government ministries not to appear before the Public Accounts Committee, suggesting that the request by the committee was beyond the scope of what is permissible, uh, what is a permissible request under the rules. Public Accounts Committee Chairman Michael Pintar, leader of the opposition, said on Tuesday that the committee will use multiple approaches in its attempts to hold government accountable on its expenditure of public funds. Mr. Pintard said the Attorney General was absolutely wrong by, in his decision. According to Mr. Pintar, the Public Accounts Committee is now writing to heads of all public boards seeking information on contracts entered into by those entities since the PLP was elected in September of 2021. He said the Public Accounts Committee, which has a majority of opposition members, will continue to pursue the matter until they get the information they are asking for. The Public Procurement Act requires that government tenders and contract awards be published. And although the PLP voted for the September 2021 bill while in opposition, since coming to power, they claim the act is insufficient and announced plans for a new and improved set of public procurement regulations. Prime Minister Davis last week in Parliament said the government will make public uh, reports on the contracts awarded since the PLP took office. Meanwhile, the Davis administration says the Bahamian people also want to know about contracts awarded during the pandemic under the Minis administration. Today, Wednesday, March 1st, marks the start of Local Government Month as Prime Minister Philip Davis declared by proclamation that March is Local Government Month. There are two forms of local government in the Bahamas, made up of 32 local government districts. Minister with responsibility for local government, Clay Sweet on Tuesday read the official proclamation. Whereas the Department of Local Government was established on the 25th of June 1996 to bring government closer to the people and increase democracy, and whereas there are currently 33 districts under the local government system of the Bahamas, and whereas local government plays a vital role in our family islands through the provision of goods and public services, and whereas local government's mission is to impact the growth and development of our family islands through the improvement of local infrastructure, businesses, and community services, and whereas local government functions to support the economic development of the Bahamas, and whereas in celebration of National Local Government Month, the Department of Local Government has organized a number of activities to be observed during the month of March under the theme Celebrating Local Government in the Year of Our Jubilee. Local government officials are distributed throughout the family islands. In May of 2022, Minister Sweeting noted that the government had hired consultants to help redraft the Local Government Act as the regime needed changes. Local government is a government nearest to the people. It is a system of government to which local residents in our family islands offer themselves for service. On the other side, it is local residents voting for and electing local leaders for a three-year term in office. Over the years, local government has evolved from a system of res resident justices in 1867 to the Out Island Administration Act in 1908, when the local board of works came into being to what we now have, local government. This came into effect in 1996 with the Local Government Act, with minor amendments here and there, but hopefully with the submission of the Local Government Review Committee there is anticipated to be more modern amendments to meet the needs of our local family island communities. Leading the list of activities for the month of March is a fun run walk and health screening on March 4th. The highlight of the month will be a gala banquet on March 25th.
And finally, while Minister of Economic Affairs, Senator Michael Halkidis believes the Bahamas' economic future and growth of the Bahamas is embedded in the expansion of the tourism sector, Shadow Minister of Finance for the opposition FNM, Kwesi Thompson, believes the Bahamas' economic future will rely more on the digitization of government sectors, which could spread to other sectors in the country. Uh, I, I envision all government services are accessed online through an interoperable government plat uh, portal. You know, this government portal is connected to banks and connected to insurance companies and utility companies and taxes and bills are paid seamlessly from this uh, portal. You know, I see a flourishing Grand Bahama, uh, uh, you know, where, where I live, um, as any discussion in the future economic development uh, of the Bahamas must have Grand Bahama and must have the family islands as an intentional priority. You know, I see a, an island in, in Grand Bahama that has a population of 250,000 with a booming tourism and industrial sector. I see a vibrant sovereign wealth fund and a national infrastructure fund that provides Bahamians with opportunities to own industries in the Bahamas. Exciting opportunities in the orange and blue economies are able to flourish and, and see their fullest potential. Minister Halkidis and Mr. Thompson were speaking as guests of the Organization for Responsible Governance recent economic roundtable discussion. Mr. Thompson also shared the opposition's vision to provide more opportunities and a bigger platform for Bahamian artists. He also envisions a smoother transition from secondary and tertiary institutions into the workforce. Uh, I, I envision all government services are accessed online through an interoperable government plat uh, portal. You know, this government portal is connected to banks and connected to insurance companies and utility companies and taxes and bills are paid seamlessly from this uh, portal. You know, I see a flourishing Grand Bahama, uh, uh, you know, where, where I live, um, as any discussion in the future economic development uh, of the Bahamas must have Grand Bahama and must have the family islands as an intentional priority. I see a, an island in, in Grand Bahama that has a population of 250,000 with a booming tourism and industrial sector. I see a vibrant sovereign wealth fund and a national infrastructure fund that provides Bahamians with opportunities to own industries in the Bahamas. Exciting opportunities in the orange and blue economies are able to flourish and, and see their fullest potential. Asked about tax reforms, Mr. Thompson says any such reforms should begin with consultation of all stakeholders with all of the options available before a decision is made about new forms of taxation. And that'll do it for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Jorino Saunders. Thanks for joining us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.